John Schieber here at the World Economic Forum with Bebop Gresta, the uh, deputy chairman and COO of Hyperloop. Transportation uh, Technologies. Transportation Technologies. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the Hyperloop right now. So, Bebop, tell me what, explain to our audience, who I, I'm sure know a little bit about it, but what, what exactly the Hyperloop is and what you're planning on doing. Okay, so it, to explain it in simple terms, you take a capsule with 28 people, you put it in a tube, you suck out the air, <laughs> and you can move this capsule at the speed of sound because there's no friction. Yeah. friction. So that's, that's it. Amazing. And, and so how quick is the... You're building a Hyperloop from, from San Francisco to Los Angeles. After how? yeah two years and a half of uh, um, uh, development, we are able today to announce at the World Economic Forum the actual filing of the uh, construction permit mm. to the Kings County. So okay. this is the first uh, concrete step for the building of the first full-scale Hyperloop. So we're ready to go. How quickly will someone be able to go from LA to San Francisco using, a hyper, using Hyperloop? 32 a... to 35 minutes. Wow, amazing. Amazing. I know, so, I know. so you, you, we were talking earlier, and you mentioned that that you're sort of developing the company in a novel way. Can you talk about how you're going about the development of the technology? One, and then also developing the company, building out the company. The concept has been invented by my business partner Dirk Alborn, uh, that was so genius to basically uh, put the white paper of Elon Musk uh, two months after uh, Elon created the project. Yeah. He published it into this uh, crowdsourcing website. And we have been like overwhelmed of requests from engineers from all over the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, there were people from, you know, NASA, Tesla, SpaceX, uh, yeah. Boeing, MIT, you know, name all, you know, the, the biggest transportation company in the world. And they not only were interested to uh, basically give us idea, they said, we want to work in it. And so we invented this system uh, uh, that allow people to work in exchange of stock option. And right now we have 520 people working from 42 countries. Wow. And from analyzing a white paper to construction, two years and a half. Now, you aren't the only Hyperloop company that's out there. What, how would you compare what you're doing to, to your competitors? What's, what's the difference between the two companies? So first, we are the first and the original that actually took the Elon uh, Musk vision and transform it into a concrete uh, hyperloop. Um, but we are very happy to have competition. We think this market will be big, and mm -hmm. we foresee 10 different hyperloops. I hope so, right? Um, there's a new company came out eight months ago. Um, they are using a very traditional uh, approach to, to do the same thing. Uh, they raised a bunch of money. They put a very big uh, board of advisor together. Um, we think the world is changed, uh, and uh, you cannot, you know, create project like this in, into a closed door of a VC inside your know, Silicon Valley. Uh, we think, you know, the world is is uh, open. It's an open platform mm -hmm. that allows minds to come together right. to solve bigger problems, right. and that's what we are right now. And we are demonstrating. They said it's a war, and they're gonna win it, or it's a race, and they're gonna win it. I, if it was a race, we already won. We are building it. <laughs> I don't think it's a race. I well, but I, I mean, are you, you, you've, 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 you're not building it yet. You've, you've, you've gotten a parcel of land from Kings County That's to true. develop it. But we are not, you know, doing experiments or funky, you know, tests. We are actually, the process will be that after the filing of the conditional permit that we did yesterday, there are six months and the county has to answer if it's positive, as we believe, they have all the interest to do that, then we have 32 months to build a full-scale hyperloop. Right. The world will be riding, in 2019, the first hyperloop of the history. So that's kind of very concrete, I think. I, I, how, at, at some point, you have to prove out the technology, right? So this is, this is at this point, still hypothetical. It's vaporware, basically. So how, I, I mean, why not go through the steps of 
processing or prototyping of building smaller scale versions we did all and this. iterate. Uh, we have a small prototype. Uh, we will show to the world what uh, it's all about. The problem was not technology. The technology was already there. We put together technology that already existed. Mm. And it's very easy to understand that, you know, uh, we have that technology since the 1870s. <laughs> it's crazy to say yeah. that the first Hyperloop was actually the New York uh, subway. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first prototype. Eli Beach uh, almost went bankrupt to, to, to try to, to do it. But, you know, humanity tried several times to build it. And in 1969, the American government uh, showed to the world into... Um, they uh, through John Volpe, the Ministry of Transportation, uh, that the American government built four um, transportation mm -hmm. systems, and two of them were very similar to the Hyperlib. Yeah. Uh, gravity vacuum uh, and, and uh, the, the other system that was basically evacuated um, similar to the Hyperloop. Right. So technology was already there. We, we innovated in a way to make it efficient. And that's the amazing thing about our Hyperloop, is that we have not only a system that is the fastest way to move on the ground, we also are the most efficient way to move. We don't need subsidies for, from the state, we cost six to ten times less than any other system, and we are energy positive. We can give back the energy to mm. the grid. So it's amazing. Where is the, where, well, uh, there are a few questions, I have so many questions actually. Go but for it. Um, when, when you, you, you talk about how you, you're using this, this sort of alternative model to develop the company. How much capital have you and your partners put into the business yourselves? So, When we think about capital, we usually think about money. This is wrong. Right. <laughs> when you calculate that almost $20 million has been given inside this project, and there's a land that right now is valued $15 million and is skyrocketing after the announcement of the build, basically. Right. And then there's software donated by companies and, and, and tools and companies that are offering to do, you know, all the geosampling and all the environmental study. Right. Everything right now has been given um, because people want to participate. Mm. And we have created probably not, not, not a company anymore. It's a movement of 20,000 people worldwide that wants this to make it happen. And we have to change the concept of capital. So it, is it still uh, viable to think about a company uh, based on the money that they have raised? I don't think so. Well, but, but at some point there's, there is ownership, right? And, and you're, you're dealing with, with something that will generate revenue and, and make money. Who's, how does that get distributed among all of the people that have contributed to the project to date? So first, our team members are actually getting stocks. Mm. So there are stock options that will be transformed into stocks. And this is amazing. It's the first time that a company does this. If you were able to buy $10 of Facebook stocks before the IPO, you will end up with $800,000. For the first time, we are giving this opportunity to our team members. Well, but you're, I mean, it's not the first time like Facebook gave stock to its initial employees. Other yeah, but people. it's already when the stock option plan uh, gets in, kicks in, uh, and you know they, they, they usually give a really little fraction of the total capital. We based our existence through the stock option plan, and it's working. So people are part-timing, mm. engineers from all over the world, people that works with Boeing, NASA. They, they, we have people from the Apollo mission. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay? So that's the kind of guy. Imagine yeah. what humanity can do if we are able to solve all the problems by putting together the best minds in the planet. Mm. And they can actually can own the project. So one, one of the, well, the big theme for the World Economic Forum has been, has been this idea of, of a fourth industrial revolution. How do you see um, what you're doing with the Hyperloop fitting into that? Um, do you think about it from, I, I mean, I, I think from a number of perspectives, you could, you could talk about it as... Uh, yeah, I've been participating in a lot of panels yeah. and discussion. I think uh, we have not to be scared about innovation. Disruption comes if you want it or not. It's happening, right? Right. So there's a big debate on, you know, computer will 
substitute us. And it's good. We have to redefine the concept of work. Is it still the, the meaning of work, going in an office for eight hours and you know, doing a job that probably you don't like and you, know, and you are in a cage uh, right. sometimes and you end up doing, you're being very, very unhappy. Okay? Right. I think we have to redefine the concept of, of society and, and we are starting to get some samples of this, basically looking at a project like us. Yeah. Okay? We are making a new way of creating companies, right. and it's working. Right. Um, we will raise money, of course, right. and we will be you know, investing it, but the, the genesis of this project mm. and the, the narrative that we are um, uh, bringing up is basically showing that the fourth industrial generation can be done yeah. with complete different princi princi right. principles. Principles, principles. yeah. Right. So, Bebo, I'm, I'm going to leave it there, but I know that I'm going to defer to you. You're the expert. You used to be an MTV VJ. <laughs> so if you were going to wrap up this, this interview and throw it out to our audience, how would you do it? Let's, I'm going I'm to let you do it. You're the pro. So, uh, guys, start disrupting. <laughs> Whatever you are, just go out, check out your friends, put it together, and change the world. All right, and there you have it, Bebo. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. Great Thank to you. talk, sir. Great Thank to you. talk.